Police searching for a missing Connecticut woman are focusing now their investigation on her estranged husband and his girlfriend. We're talking about 50-year-old Jennifer Dulos, who disappeared two weeks ago. According to the Hartford Current, the girlfriend of Dulos' estranged husband met with the investigators Friday. and They walked the wooded area behind the home that she shared with her boyfriend. CNN's Jean Casares has more. As law enforcement continue their investigation into the disappearance of 50-year-old Jennifer Dulos, legal documents say something police won't say at this point. Jennifer Dulos was the victim of a crime. After last being seen on the morning of May 24th dropping her children off at school, hours later a missing persons report was filed. During a search of her home, police discovered multiple stains of blood on the floor, multiple areas of suspected blood spatter, and attempts to clean up the scene. They concluded Dulos was a suspected victim of a serious physical assault. The truth of it is that people are all dealing with, uh, with something that doesn't even seem real, and yet it clearly is real. Reverend Peter Walsh led community members at a prayer vigil after the mother of five went missing, while police focused on their investigation calling residents of New Canaan to ask for help. As part of this timeline, we seek video surveillance from homes or businesses that have cameras which capture vehicular activity on roadways. That timeline had law enforcement searching a busy street in Hartford after city surveillance video showed what appeared to be her estranged husband, Fotis Dulos, depositing trash bags into garbage receptacles more than 30 stops in all, hours after Jennifer Dulos went missing. A woman matching his girlfriend, Michelle Traconis' description, is seen with him. Clothes and a sponge from the recovered bags were confirmed to have Jennifer's blood on them. That led police to arrest Fotis Dulos and Traconis, charging them with tampering with evidence and hindering prosecution. After an initial court appearance, Traconis posted the $500,000 bond. Dulos did not and remains in jail. Jennifer Dulos and her husband of 12 years have been embroiled in a divorce battle for the last two years. In her original divorce filing, Jennifer told the court, quote, I am afraid of my husband. I know he will retaliate by trying to harm me in some way and claimed that he threatened to kidnap their children. Fotis Dulos denied it all to the court. While police continue to conduct searches at properties he owns, they are also coming through mountains of trash for any evidence that can determine what really happened to Jennifer Dulos. Jean Casares, CNN, New Canaan, Connecticut. Let's talk about this in this week's legal brief. Criminal defense attorney Janet Johnson with us now. So the new news this morning, Janet, is that they've taken the girlfriend who now seems to be cooperating. Initially, she was not. Neither of them were. Um, they've taken her to the house. They've taken her to the woods. Her presence here is a game changer, is it not? If I were defending him, I would be nervous because she's charged with the exact same things mm -hmm. and she's out on bond. She has met with her lawyer and with the authorities and now she's gone back to the house where presumably she can tell them where evidence is. It would make it impossible for him to say you should suppress this evidence because I didn't give any permission to search the house because it's her house too. She is certainly flipping on him and I think that's going to help the prosecution. So let me ask you this though. The expectation is that they would turn on each other. I mean, that mm -hmm. is not unusual. But what does she need in terms of evidence, of proof of whatever she says, to prove the incrimination as opposed to just he said, she said? Well, her words are evidence, Christy. I mean, people, you know, think it's hearsay and it, it wouldn't be admissible. Her words would be evidence, although she has a motivation to try to save her own neck. But, you know, she also might claim, by the way, that she was abused as well, because that does seem to be a, a pattern with him. But she probably knows where, you know, there might be bleach, where there might be evidence that was used to first commit the crime and then, you know, clean it up afterwards. And she's an eyewitness. She's someone who can say, yes, I did it as well. But here's what, you know, I'm taking responsibility and here's what happened. Mm. All right. And Jennifer filed papers back in 2017 mm -hmm. saying that Fotis was irrational, unsafe, bullying, threatening, controlling behavior, that he threatened to kidnap the kids, as we heard there. How important is it? Because you hear a lot of women say, listen, I filed documents and nothing happened and I was still hurt. How important, though, now is it? 
that she filed documented papers. Right. Well, it, I mean, if something, if they find a corpse, if it turns out that he's charged with murder, these could be words from the grave. I mean, imagine a prosecution where you have her own words talking about what he did to her. Those are powerful, powerful words. It's almost like she's testifying, which you never have when somebody is deceased. Uh, you know, it's a shame that nothing was done to keep her safe if it turns out that that's what happened. But at least she has documented what happened and okay. that he was a threat.